years ago, back when I was in my senior year of high school, my friends and I would spend our mornings in the library just taking a look at different prospects that were going to come up in the NHL drafts. Because it was 2018, we took a lot of guys like Rasmus Dahlin, and we took a lot of guys like Quinn Hughes as our form of pre-class entertainment. Just watching the highlights, looking at the numbers, these were the guys we focused on. However, because we were curious 18, soon to be 18, 17 year olds, we were like, yeah, you know, let's take a look at some of the other guys who are going to be drafted down the line. Back then, we took a look at guys like Jack Hughes and Newhook and Krebs and all these other players who were going to be drafted in 2019. But we would go even further than that once in a while. And sometimes, when we were really bored, we would take a look at the 2020 draft, and Quinton Byfield was the guy that we all had our eyes on as being pretty gosh darn good, because back when Quinton Byfield was only 15 years old, he was 6 foot 3, 190 pounds. Nowadays, Quinton Byfield is over here, 6 foot 4, 215 pounds, playing for the Sudbury Wolves in the OHL. What is up, your other watchers for the arcs back here, and today we're doing another Why I Want video on a 2020 draft eligible prospect, one who my friends and I hold very deeply as somebody who we would look at and idolize back two years ago. Quinton Byfield is a guy who, back in 2018, when I was in my senior year of high school making YouTube videos, I made a video asking the question on whether or not he would go first overall. Back then, I said it was kind of a stretch. He could go first overall. He probably will go second because Alexi Lafreniere is very, very highly touted. But for the most part, Quinton Byfield has been on my radar as a solidified number two, potential number one for the past few years. And there's no reason for me to sit here and say that anything has changed. Today, we're going to be getting into what makes Quinton Byfield so special, where he's going to go in the draft, and how he projects in the future based off of his body of work, pretty much. Quinton Byfield right now is a 17-year-old August 2002 born player. It means that he is one of the youngest players eligible in this NHL entry draft, and that's no obstacle for Byfield. The guy is huge, 6 foot 4, 215 pounds, playing for the Sudbury Wolves right now. He's at 82 points in 45 games played, 32 goals and 50 assists. It's a really good number for a guy who wasn't super hot last year in comparison to what people thought. Sure, he was just under a point per game last year and he was the rookie of the year and everything, which is awesome. But for Quinton Byfield, a lot of people, myself somewhat included, thought that he had a little bit more to give at the OHL level. Well, this year, he's kind of done that. It's his draft year, 82 points, 45 games played. Taking a look at where Quinton Byfield is in the points race, he is all the way down there in a pretty nice tie with a few other players for 14th in the league in scoring. That's not bad. That's really not bad. However, some may take a look at the top of the draft and say, yeah, well, guys like Marco Rossi and Cole Perfetti and Jack Quinn, all these guys have more points than Byfield. What makes him so special? Well, hold your horses right there, because Marco Rossi, Jack Quinn, these are two examples of guys who are almost a full year older than Byfield. So that's something that you definitely have to take a look at and consider as well. Byfield also plays the game in such a unique way that I think the potential he has is honestly kind of untapped. You'll hear it time and time again, some people talking about how raw Quinton Byfield is, and I think it's less so that he's raw, and it's more so that he has so much more to give. The Sudbury Wolves are a team that are doing pretty well in the standings, or, well, they've done pretty well in the standings because the OHL season was suspended. However, a lot of Quinton Byfield's positive attributes would be highlighted so much more if he just had better teammates. That's not to discredit Blake Murray or David Levin or any of the other guys that he plays with, 
but probably the biggest thing that I've noticed while tracking Quinton Byfield in OHL games is the fact that the play never, it never dies on his stick. Quinton Byfield always does something so positive with the puck, whether that's sending out a nice centering pass to a guy in front, or starting out a nice breakout, or giving somebody a great opportunity to walk in with some free space. That if he just played with a little bit better teammates, if he played with guys who knew how to finish a little bit better, then I think Quinton Byfield would have so much more points. Sure, he can score some goals, yes. He's got a pretty nice slap shot that he doesn't use frequently, but when he does, it usually goes in. His wrist shot, it's effective, and he's able to score at the proper times. But Quinton Byfield, to me, is a pure playmaker, and the skills that he has within his frame make him such an effective one at that, that if he just played with better teammates, I think his status as a full, renounced playmaker would be more solidified. Quinton Byfield moves around the ice so predominantly well that it doesn't even really look like he's trying all too much out there. Maybe it's because he's big, but even when the guy glides around, it doesn't really look like he's putting in too much effort. But then all of a sudden, he closes the gap on the guy who has the puck and boom, he steals it. Even when he takes the puck and he starts things out, when he's flat-footed, he can go from 0 to 100 real quick. His skating is so powerful and every stride he takes is so effective in getting him and where he needs to be that time and time again you'll see the play start up on Byfield stick, he'll start charging forward with it like a horse, and all of a sudden he's overtaken two or three guys. Quinton Byfield is an absolutely physical specimen for being an OHL player that it's crazy how quickly he is able to take control of a shift. When he has the puck in the offensive zone, he's not afraid to hold on to it, and it's really difficult to shove him off the puck because he uses his body so well to shield the puck. The guy's six foot four, 215 pounds, remember? It's hard to shove that off the puck, and when he wants to, he can just totally toy with the opponents. Even in the bad games that Sudbury has, where they just completely get destroyed, I've seen some of these games too, Quinton Byfield is always out there as somebody who isn't a scapegoat. There are always plays where you take a look at the team and you say, yeah, that play could have been executed better. But Quinton Byfield, in my viewing experience, has never been the guy who has been solely responsible for an opponent's goal. In fact, even when the team plays poorly, it's very obvious to see that Quinton Byfield is still a very positive contributor to his hockey team. It's absolutely crazy how skilled he is and how much he can grow. Because when I take a look at Quinton Byfield's game, I see a projectable game that does scream first-line center in the NHL, a franchise-defining center, and a guy who can definitely go out there and eventually probably contend for an Art Ross one day. That's how much I'm high on Quinton Byfield. It's even kind of interesting to note, because probably the only setback that I would take is the fact that in his own zone, when the other team has possession and they're cycling it, Byfield once in a while doesn't really know what to do sometimes. He gets lost quite frequently, well, not quite frequently, but somewhat frequently, when the opposing team is cycling it in the zone. But obviously, as a 17-year-old guy, as a guy who's almost a full year younger than Lafreniere and Rossi and Jack Quinn, I'm not going to expect anybody to be perfect in this draft. But the reason we say that Quinton Byfield has so much untapped potential is because things like defensive awareness and knowing where to be, you can coach that into a player. But the offensive skill that Quinton Byfield has to slow the game down and to actually depict plays before they happen, that's something you can't teach. The guy processes the game at such a high level that you can totally see that he is one of the smartest and one of the most casual players on his team every time he gets the puck. Quinton Byfield, to me, projects as a first-line center guaranteed. There's no way he doesn't fill things out, and he doesn't become such an incredible player in this league. And if he does, then I'll eat my hat. But the way I see it, Quinton Byfield is going to be a franchise guy 
His hands are incredible. His offensive awareness is incredible. The way he skates and the way he moves is so indomitable that it combines for such a unique package that we don't see in NHL athletes pretty much at all. Sure, he's big, but he's no Eric Lindros. He doesn't go out there and he doesn't power his way to the front of the net. Instead, he uses his soft, silky mitts his really high level of finesse, and his incredible hockey IQ to make plays happen. The play never dies on a stick, and he always does something positive with it. That's why to me Byfield projects as, honestly, I said it, Art Ross contention once in a while. I wouldn't want to put a label on a ceiling for Byfield because I think that he has such an incredibly high ceiling that only time will tell. He will play in the NHL next year for whoever drafts him either second overall or maybe even first overall, and I think he will indeed make an impact once he steps into the league. That has been why I want on Quinton Byfield. This was recorded in one take, so I'm very proud of that. Hope you enjoyed this video, especially like Rosal 99. And bye. <laughs>